This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am outside here in a fairly nondescript part of Florida, and there's a lot of critters crawling around. You know in the Everglades, they have so many giant pythons now that the, that the pythons have eaten all the deer, which is really bad, and they've eaten all the alligators, which is probably worse or at least scarier because the pythons have no natural predator, which means they are coming for you. Sarasota. Anyway, on that note, uh, a quick note before we get into it, because it's, it's semi-related to this episode. The next episode we are doing, it is the breakup diaries. It is the best of the breakups, your breakups. So not that we want to necessarily get into the, the sad or the macabre, but we are doing a listener letters devoted entirely to the how, when, why, where you broke up. So whether you were the breaker upper or you were the breaker up e, and this means a significant relationship, not someone you had like nachos with three times. So it's got to be a real relationship. This was my boyfriend. This was my husband. Okay. So you're like, why are we doing an episode of, like that? And my answer is, I think we can learn. And if you're sending one of these in, I think you hopefully are past it. And hope you can, in fact, learn from it and maybe laugh at it. And in the learning and the healing and the sharing, we'll bring everyone a bit more, I don't know, forward. Because there's, there's this collective sense of solace in the misery and the uh, camaraderie in the commonality. So we all went through this and we all will get through this together. So send those in and we will deal the deck. Send them in. GreatLoveDebate at gmail.com. This isn't a... Uh, loser's Lament. It will be more like a uh, Survivor's sequel. Okay? On to the next. So why do I bring this stuff up? As I have said many, many times on this podcast, that I believe I do not offer advice. But I do offer opinion. And my opinion is not just rooted in my personal experience, but in the collective experiences of the millions of people who have listened to this show over eight years or so, <clears throat> and the tens of thousands who've come to one of our live shows. We listen, and we learn, and we share. So you can call it advice if you want, and you can do whatever you want with this information at the end of the day. It's for entertainment purposes only. We're not writing out any prescriptions here. But when I do these episodes solo, and I'm more and more frequently doing my podcast solo, I think I really need to be inspired by a guest to have them sit down at one of these chairs. You know? I don't want just any person there. So when I, when I do an episode solo, I'm speaking to you from a place of, at the very least, passion. I, I, you know, I like to get in this stuff because I care about this stuff. And if you care about this stuff, you are listening... And you can call it advice, or you can call it opinion, or just a really strong statement, and whatever you want. But here we go. So I lead a very minimalist lifestyle. I initially got my inspiration from our friend James Altucher, who some of you probably know who he is. He's been on this podcast a bunch. He's been on our stage a bunch. He's a writer. He's a renaissance man, et cetera, et cetera. And he suddenly, at 48 years old, decided to throw out or sell everything. And he was left with pretty much one suitcase and one backpack. And he found the exercise of doing that and the reality of the result of that so liberating and such a sense of clarity just by being uncluttered by a bunch of stuff. And he became more productive And he felt things and experiences and people a lot more deeply. And I'm just like that. Minimalism doesn't require you to have nothing. It doesn't mean I have nothing. It means you have as little as you require. And that could mean something different to you than it does to me. It might mean something to James as it does to me. I require very little. 
You guys heard me do an episode uh, a whole a uh, few months ago where I laid out. I only really need to hear five things from my partner. Just cut through all the rest. Those five things. That's all I need, and the rest is just a bonus. So, like James, one of the things I need is my laptop, and ninety percent of what I care about are words I've written or things I've recorded or feelings I've felt or relationships I've formed or something I've created. And a lot of those things live on the laptop. And I'm not even sure if I need the laptop. Some of those things are probably on the cloud, and if you hack me, you have access to any of them anyway. But the laptop also gives me access to those things. So it's a means to an end. It's a portal into something. But for some reason... Even in 2023, even with the cloud, the laptop slows down and the things clog up. And you have to, every once in a while, clear the catch to get it to run smoothly. Aha, metaphor. But when you do that with your computer, it's such an oddly frightening proposition because you're terrified that the wrong thing will disappear. You'll lose a a file or a browser history or a password or a page or something you might need. And every time we do this, or at least every time I do this, it's such a torturous and stressful set of decisions. It's so fraught with peril, even more so than the, the pythons and the Everglades. I am terribly stressed out to let that stuff go. But when you do it, everything runs smoother And you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad at all. I guess I didn't need that stuff. I don't even know what disappeared. It seems fine. So what does all this amateur tech talk have to do with love dating relationships? Everything. And I'm going to tease you with that. And we will dive into all of this and more right after this. And we are back. And we're talking about clearing the catch. And we're talking about it in terms of relationships. So think about how many relationships you have had. And going back to our definition at the beginning, something more substantial than three plates of nachos. I'm talking about people you've dated, people who have been your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, partner of some sort for at least, I don't know, 100 days. And I think all of those people and experiences and relationships, those shape a ton of of our dating data moving forward, whether it's the pain of it or the asshole part of it, the crazy bitches, the narcissist, etc. We carry them around in our cookies and they really clog up and skew our vision of our opportunities and possibilities, whether that's not getting into a situation that has potential or not sticking with a relationship that might work out You're still mad at him or her or that time or that thing or those words. And you carry them around. And everything from those things you carry around turns out to be a trigger that could set something going in the wrong direction. And I can't can't say that you can just delete those with two clicks of a mouse. But you do have to do the work to get past them. You have to clear them out. And we have done whole episodes of this podcast on the this nebulous concept of closure and how I, I believe it doesn't really exist because when you're seeking closure, you're never going to get the answer you want in the way that you want it or the satisfaction that you seek or the revenge that you desire. It, life just doesn't come wrapped in a neat little bow like that. So how do you balance learning from the past, nodding at it, acknowledging it, accepting that it's real, And then letting it go so you can look to the future. So I got my own set of issues and baggage and shit to work through. Clearly, you guys know that. If you're listening to 400 or so episodes of this, very well documented on this podcast. But all of my stuff, I believe, stems from a lot of childhood issues. Actually, and fortunately, if I've had, say, I don't know. 25, 30 girlfriends in my life, give or take a dozen. And that really sucks that I'm like, give or take a dozen. I should, I should know a little bit closer than that. I can honestly say that I don't have anything but good feelings about any of them. None. 
I think they all are or were great. And part of that is probably my stubbornness to admit that I may have been wrong about their awesomeness or that I had bad taste or that I made a bad choice. But part of that is a choice that I made that was, you know, fairly actually prescient. It was like, yeah, I see the good in them and I still see the good in them. Part of that, in a bad way, is that I think I was never deeply emotionally in- involved enough, unfortunately, where I would have feelings of anger and resentment. Part of it is luck. I think I dodged the true total psycho bullet. But I think most of it is mindset. Because I don't see the point of harboring, you know, anything bad about somebody you went out with. That was then, this is now. And you're probably like, well, you harbor resentment towards your family members who may have let you down in emotional and loving situations. For sure. Absolutely. And maybe that's it. Maybe because I couldn't get past that, I couldn't get anywhere truly substantial with any of these 30, give or take a dozen girlfriends. Because I failed to clear that catch before I got into the relationships, which definitely wasn't fair to them. And it isn't fair to you if you're operating the same way. This leads to this leads to that. Or doesn't lead to that. Means you get nowhere productive. So when I self-analyze, it's easy for me to let go of the stuff that didn't truly matter and be an emotional minimalist on the surface, but still have those giant files and elaborate browsing history going way, way back that you need to deal with and delete if you want to move forward in any meaningful fashion. Because so many of our relationships and so much of our pain and our issues are derived from what we are bringing forward. And unfortunately, almost all of what we bring forward is bad. The bad baggage. Not the Louis Vuitton luggage. Because if all of you're getting out of these past relationships was good stuff, you'd probably still be in those relationships. You're not leaving a good relationship most of the time. So if you're focused on the good, you're probably like, you know what, we can work through the bad and we'll stick with the good and you'd still be with them. So we've probably said on this podcast once upon a time or twice upon a time that every relationship should be a learning experience and provide wisdom and experience and positivity to bring forward with you, blah, blah, blah. And I say blah, 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 but do we mean that? We do. I do. But is that easier said than done? Absolutely. So we carry this big bushel of blinders and barriers and red flags and sensitive guts. I feel it in my gut. And all the stuff that probably should just be cleared out. Start fresh. Brand new browser. Bring in the Firefox. And so you're like, how do, how do we do that? I'm getting somewhere with all this, I promise. Therapy? Sure, yes. Time? Yes. All of it. But the wisest person who ever came through this podcast planet of ours was, and is, I guess, our longtime producer, the two-time Emmy Award winning Keiko. She's, she's a very zen woman. She's very calm. She's very astute. She has lots of Eastern sensibility. And she is absolutely convinced of the healing power of gratitude. And back when, when I first met her, I found out that she starts every single day with this, this ritual, this ritual of things. It's sort of between a, a prayer and an inventory of the good in her life. And, and so she likes birds, and she would say, thank you for the birds. And she might even say thank you to the birds. I don't know. Same thing about sunshine. She was grateful for sunshine and so on. Not things that she owned. Not cars, not houses. Gratitude for things in her world. And when she first described it, I, th- I thought it was a little nutty. It seemed like talking to yourself. 
but I'm always curious. So I dove into the, the, the people who practice gratitude the way I dove at one point into the people who practice stoicism. I'm like, huh, stoicism. I want to I wanna see what that is. But stoicism requires too much listening to others instead of yourself. So obviously that wasn't the one for me. But this gratitude thing, I didn't really understand it be, between sort of the surface of saying thank you. But as I dove into it, gratitude as, as a core essence, it can clear the catch. It can delete the bad and let the good flow through everything more than anything else. So I have, you know, like most people, I have a deep desire to be appreciated. And I think as appreciation flows into you, it can also flow out of you and vice versa. And this might all sound a bit woo-woo for me, but you have to think about it practically. And the, and the positive effects of it, I hear some birds right now. Being appreciative and understanding and grateful of what surrounds you in the present goes a long way to blurring and distancing from the noise of the past. And all of it opens up these areas for imagination and understanding because you are focused on the now, not what they did then, what you are doing now. I am grateful for this, which can lead to that. It's much better than if I'm angry about that, which gets in the way of this now, today, tomorrow. And as I dove deeper into it, I found that the most grateful people in the world tend to be the happiest. And the most resentful people, the people who are hanging on to that stuff, they're not. So gratitude, by definition, if you look it up, it means a readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. And that is probably the best mindset to get into a relationship or to stay in one, even go on a first date. You're ready to show appreciation and return kindness. That's probably going to go a long way to getting a second date. It influences mood. It influences action. It influences possibilities. And it influences happiness. And happiness is where love is most likely to be incubated. And that might sound a little creepy. Pick up line. Baby, would you like to come incubate some love with me? Probably creepy. But you know what I mean. But I learned that gratitude is infectious. It's contagious, just as negativity is. You can definitely spread negative energy. So when you clean out the catch, going back to that, I think you're eliminating things you don't need anymore. You're a Microsoft minimalist, if you will. And what you're left with is what is important, what matters, what is now, what is present, and what brings you into tomorrow. So I can't tell you to go to a hypnotist to forget about all the jerks and the assholes and the incidents and the narcissists and the crazies and whatever you want to call them. The liars and the cheaters and the dickheads. And I can't even really tell you to go to a therapist, although you should. I'm telling you that you should just focus on the good of right now, what you have, not what you want or don't have or missed out on or was denied to you or denied from you. What do you have that you are grateful for? That's what you remain in the catch. This podcast, in the catch. The possibilities on the dating apps. This upcoming weekend. Tomorrow. Tonight. None of those things should be influenced or impacted by any of that stuff in your catch. Clear the browsing history of all the no's and the non-starters that are in there. The cookies? I don't know. Go eat some good ones. Be grateful for those. Because it's all about mindset, I think. You can call that opinion. You can call that advice. Or you can just label that as something that will probably benefit all of us. So next week, we will exercise the X's and throw all the breakups in the bin. And we will collectively clear our catch. That is a very alliterative setup to what we're doing here. So send those along. Great love debate at gmail.com. They can be good, bad, funny, strange, sad. But most of all, they are meant to be liberating. That is the point of this today. That is the point of next week and every week after that onward and upward. 
please like, share, follow, and review this podcast. Your reviews mean a lot still after eight years in the podcasting ecosystem. Uh, go to our website, greatlovedebate.com. Check out our live tour schedule. There will be some on there by the time you listen to this episode. So do that. Raleigh's going to be on there. Phoenix is going to be on there. A couple more. Because as always, at the Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time. <laughs>